everybody. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas. Good evening and welcome to London, England. We're at the Royal London Theatre for a much anticipated main event. Scheduled for 12 rounds of heavyweights between these two great warriors. Fighting out of the blue corner, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Bad Intentions. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, Bad Intentions. All right, guys, remember, obey my commands at all times. All right, let's have a good clean fight. So we are underway here. Round one, scheduled for 12. Teddy, the expectation in a matchup like this, a power puncher versus power puncher, is that the fight's not going to last long. But what if it does? Then what? The guy with less power is going to win because he's a guy that has a reserve, a reserve in a place that he's ready to go to in case the power is not there. Intended for his head. Good scoring shot. It was a straight right. They both decide to bring it. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut. He got hit, but he sends it right back. Place counter by bad intentions. <laughs> Halfway through round number one. Teddy, we hear a lot of people talking about where are the next great fighters coming from? In your eyes, I mean, you're around gyms all over the country, all over the world. Where are they coming from? Well, Joe, I'll tell you where they're not coming from. They're not coming from football anymore. In the old days, the big guys, instead of going on the football field, somebody would look to make them into the next heavyweight champ. But now they're going to college, they're going to places where they find it a little bit of an easier travel. And we're losing a lot of those athletes. He's got a tough go of it now, as you can see, swelling. Excellent counter punch by Bad Intentions. This is great action right from the start. What an opening round between these two. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to feel a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. Come on, come on. Ten seconds to go in this round. And once again, he returns fire up top. We come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down blue or red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. And a good counter by bad intentions.
blocked there by bad intentions. Unable to score with the uppercut that time. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. Halfway through round number two. Went to the body there, but unable to connect. with an overhand right. We're seeing a lot of work to the body here early on by him. Teddy, is that a certain mentality, these guys that commit to being a body puncher? Yeah, because they understand that the body punching, you know, that's not something that's glorious. That's not something that's, you know, like a great left hook on the chin, bang, and gets results right away. They understand that that's something that pays off later and something you got to start early and stay with. Counterpunch. Just ten seconds to go in this round. And this round comes to an end. It is a round that was highly entertaining. These guys really put forth quite an effort. Well, they both have high engines. They have motors that never stop going. Able to block that away. It was targeted for his head. off with a combination up top well done that time landing the counter punch and a well-placed counter by bad intentions And forth they go, each man getting the best of it. Good looking counter punch. Bad intentions, his eye to me, is getting worse as things continue on here. Teddy, he's got to be very conscious of that, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, and his corner has to be too. They got to be thinking about if it gets to the point where he can't defend himself, they have to do something. Obviously, they didn't come here thinking they were going to have to do. Stop this fight. Took a shot. Now he gives a left. Fires right back at him. Good block there by bad intentions. after a fine defensive effort by bad intentions. Good block there by bad intentions. Ten seconds 
to go in this third round. Keep on. Don't give him a chance to set his feet. Here we go with the fourth round. And a nice combo by Bad Intentions. Excellent hook to the body by Bad Intentions. Good looking counter punch. Body shot! What a nice counter that was! And that is not what his opponent really wants. He's backed up against the ropes. Holy cow! He is damaged badly there. He may hit the floor. Bad intentions is trying to create some space between him and his opponent. You know he wants to fight on the inside. He cannot be smothered. Stunned, but now he's surviving. Good defensive skill with the block by bad intentions. Halfway through round number four. Nice job to land that counter punch and getting away from one of his own by bad intentions. to show you his blocking ability. Could be a factor later on. And he returns on that exchange. You're looking good. Keep it up. Keep those hands. So here we are, a new round underway, and in that last round. He got tagged. He got hit pretty hard, Teddy. Yeah, he did. He got caught. Now, the first thing is, we all know he got caught, but why did he get caught? He has to be able to decipher that in his head. He has to be able to have the answer to that so it doesn't happen again. Teddy, is this becoming a mental thing with him? I mean, he's not firing off the big power punches. I got to wonder why. You know, that's a good question. Sometimes a guy is making a solemn agreement in his mind that maybe if I don't hit him hard, he won't hit me hard back. He's not confident enough now to throw the punches without worrying about what to come back at him. He missed with that headshot. sense that they know no other way how to fight. They are going at it, back and forth, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, punch for punch. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. 
Finds his target again. Wow, just sit back and enjoy this one. You can tell both guys are so determined to give everything they have here tonight. It was like the first time you heard Ray Charles sing God Bless America. You knew it was special. You knew you hadn't heard it before. I haven't seen anything like this before. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an up. Oh, Bad Intentions is in a bad spot right now. He's been stunned. Some bad Intentions here. is showing some real cuts here. Hey, this fight was not going his way at all, but somehow he has gathered momentum. Yeah, he behaved like a fighter. He got through the tough times, and now guess what? Good times in front of him. Hey, I thought he was going to be knocked out just moments ago, but he has survived this. Well, he has a granite chin. Final 10 seconds of this fifth round. He's in a tough spot. There's no way around it. The eye is swelling so badly that we could see an end to this fight. Yes, it is, but it's not an impossible spot. It's not a spot where fighters before him have not been in and have not survived and even won it. You look at Carmen Basilio when he fought the late, great Sugar Ray Robinson. You know, his eyes were closed. He found a way to win. Blocks that punch. Comes right back with a shot of his own. And a sharp counter punch by bad intentions. Finds his target again. I'm wondering what the opposing corner is going to do here. They got to their man earlier. They were able to rock him. And really nothing's changed. He's showing them the same exact look, the same exact style that he came here with. Well, first of all, the opponent should keep doing what he's doing. You know, you're landing. You found something that's working. Stay with it until he changes. A little defense turns to offense by bad intentions. And coming upon the halfway mark of this three-minute round. And a smart counterpunch by Bad Intentions. You can see what he's trying to do there. He wants to create space. A little push, a little shove. Why not? Get away from me. Missed by bad intentions. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut. How is he able to do this? How is he able to take these shots? You know, one time Muhammad Ali talked about taking a chin. He had one of the great chins of all time. And what he basically talked about was that when you start to get hit those shots, you start to go down a hallway. And then you go into a gray room. You go from a light room to a gray room. And at the end of the hallway, you see a dark room. You don't want to go to that dark room. And you have a choice. You put your feet down, you start backing up. I'm not going to that dark room. This guy is not being taken to that dark room.
see he's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. Well-targeted counterpunch by bad intentions. And there he counters back against his opponent. through the seventh round. Keeps his hands up defensively, protecting the head. And a stabbing right hand by bad intentions. What a fight. What a great, great, non-stop action fight this has been. Well, it's not horrible damage, but his nose is bleeding. Offense comes back with the counter punch. And that's exactly what he brings to the game. He makes you miss, he makes you pay, and he makes you think twice about throwing a punch later on. This has been a very entertaining fight. A little time to reflect here at the end of this round. My thoughts being this I would really be surprised if we go to a decision here. It just has that kind of feel to it. Yeah, it has a feel to me like going to one of those places where you can eat all the pasta you can for one price, you know? And some guys get carried away. They eat about five bowls. Well, these guys, they're gonna have a stomach ache at the end. Somebody is gonna wind up not standing at the end. There's a taste of the sweet science. You see the skill he has in counter punching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. Oh, a nice two punch combo by bad intentions. Tensions. Good job staying away from the danger there. right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. Very nice defensive guard there. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Great movement to get away from those punches. to land that counter punch and getting away from one of his own by bad intentions. And now he's acting like a fighter. Coming back with the right hand after getting scored upon. Good defensive skill.
gets rid of that effort. Ten seconds to go in this round. <laughs> Able to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut. End of this round. Joe and Teddy sitting ringside with you. It gives us time to reflect on the bigger picture of boxing. You know, it was interesting. We had a fan walk up to you earlier today and say, hey, I know you learned everything from the legendary Custom Auto, the great trainer. And he said to you, what's the one thing you took away from all your years with Cuss? What did you say to him? Well, it wasn't a paycheck. I'll tell you that much. Because Cuss didn't believe in paying you for that. He said, you're going to college, you're getting a valuable uh, education, and you're not even being forced to pay a tuition. So I understood that. We worked seven days a week, so there was no union. Uh, Cus believed in working on Sundays, so you couldn't go complain and say I'm being overworked. But I think, seriously, that the most important thing that I learned, of course, that from a technical standpoint, you have to be really secure in those areas. No matter how much talent a fighter has, you have to teach them right, teach them the fundamentals, but mentally. You have to understand that a fighter's really always under fear. And you have to understand those dimensions those parameters and you have to be able to find a way to get in there understanding how he feels mentally and understanding how that can impair his judgment stop him from doing simple physical things gotta try to do better than that he missed with that hook see the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs Targeted counterpunch by bad intentions. Undoubtedly, the most effective element of his entire arsenal tonight. Oh, that's gotta hurt. He is damaged badly there. He may hit the floor. Punch it out. Punch it out. Off to the side. A little swing and a miss going upstairs. And now you're seeing the beard that this guy possesses because he went from stunned and damaged to staying right upright. Oh, this is like Santa Claus's beard. I'm telling you right now. This is great stuff. I mean, great stuff. Bringing it every which way they are. Joe, you remember the time you were on a vacation, you saw that perfect sunset? Oh, yeah. It was just beautiful. This is beautiful. Good to find Really wanted that uppercut, but just couldn't get it. He takes a shot and then commits to giving one right back. Locks that belt line well. This has been a hotly contested war throughout, and you just have a sense that it's going to end at any moment in these later rounds. Yeah, these guys are not saving anything. They're going for broke right from the beginning. Good defensive skill with the block by bad intentions. Teddy, you can see quite clearly that that cut is becoming a major problem for him. What does he have to do strategically here to deal with it? Well, there's three lines of defense, Joe, whether you're cut or you're not cut. One is use your legs. Get out of range a little bit. The other is move your head. The other is block. He has to pick one of those defensive strategies, one of those choices, and put it into place. Targeting that one-two. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. Very nice work from both men. They each got a shot in.
punch after some fine defense by bad intentions. In and out, in and out, in and out. Let's move. <laughs> Good block. sense this fight could be heading towards a stoppage. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. by bad intentions. Both men digging in with uppercuts. Way to block there. Staying away from those headshots with his defense up top. Turned that hook over, but couldn't turn it into a connect. This is why we love the sport, Teddy. I mean, this is just back and forth action, nonstop. Well, Joe, what special events have happened in history, you remember where you are. Right now, I'm going to remember where I was during this fight. I'm watching a special epic right in front of me. Glad to be here doing it, too. What a war this is. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left-hand scores. Smart counterpunch there. Yeah, that's beautiful. You make the guy miss, you make him pay. <laughs> Locks away that headshot. Locks that belt line well. What a good war this has been. What a good, good, solid fight it's been. The kind of fight that tells me somebody wants to get rid of the other guy. It almost looks like they made a deal where neither one could win by decision. Where if they didn't win by knockout, it doesn't count. Oh, 
boy, look at this. Right from the get-go, they go after one another. They remind me of my 15-year-old son going to the dinner table. Just not there, straight right hand off the mark. Good block there by bad intentions. Trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Not able to land the uppercut. been two minutes of non-stop action. Now the final minute has arrived. And a smart counterpunch by Bad Intentions. Nice block. Good job staying away from the danger there. Well, which way did it go? That is the question everybody wants the answer to. The man with the answer is standing in the ring, and here he is. Bad Intentions is your winner. Two judges overcoming the one who saw it a draw. Just not much to separate these two all night long. So a majority decision goes in his favor. Good, enjoyable, entertaining fight it was. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore saying thanks for being with us.